Okay, so now that we reviewed our laws of exponents, now it's time to start talking about the laws of logs. So um, just like we had a very particular type of exponential that built up the exponential functions, right? We had our uh, special you know, base, right? And our typical exponential function is f of x equals e to the x, right? Where e is 2.7, bunch of stuff. Right, some irrational number <clears throat> that we'll get into why it's special later. But right now, it's special because this is a very common function in all areas of bio science. Okay, so f of x is equal to e to the x. So then the special, you know, logarithm is defined as the inverse of this special exponent. Okay, the natural log, right, natural logarithm, ln of x, you may have seen this before, is defined as the inverse function for the special exponential of base e. Okay? So what that means is that, you know, if I have uh, ln of e to the x, then that just gives me back if I have e to the ln x, I get x. They're inverse function. Okay? So then, you know, what does ln of x equal y mean? Well, this means that x is the value you get when you take e to the y. Right? So e to the y equal to x. This means the same thing as ln x equals y. They're just inverse operations to each other. Okay, so let's do some examples to make this a little more uh, concrete. So an example would be, let's say, ln of 100. Right, if you plug this into your calculator, you'll get that this is equal to 4.605. And how does it know that? Well, it checks what exponent of e gives us the value 100. Right, so you look at like a graph of e, and find the x value, which is 4.65, that gives me the value 100. Okay? Let's do another one. Let's say we're going from exponential logarithms, right? So if I look at e to the fifth, right? If I plug that into a calculator, I'll get 148. One. So what this means is that the natural log of 148.41 is equal to 5. We'll do maybe one or two more. Right? If I start with ln of 0 0.1, right? if I plug that into a calculator, I get negative 2.302. And what that means is that e to negative 2.302 gives me the value 0 0.1. If I do one more example, right, e to the minus 3, plug that into a calculator, I'll get 0 0.04979. And what that means is that if I took the natural log of this number on the right, it would give me negative 3 as the value of that log. Okay, so these are inverse functions to one another. And so we can write down the log of logs, and they're very similar to the laws of exponents except they were going to be kind of inverse laws to each other. So law number one, right, our law one for law of exponents was that when we multiply, you know, two exponentials together, you add the exponents. So this is the opposite. If I start with a multiplication on the inside of these logs, that separates out into an addition of the logs. Okay? And so where this comes from is... Let's apply the exponential to both sides. So if I do exponential to this side, I get e to the ln xy, right? Since these are inverses, I just get xy, right? x times y. If I do the same thing over here, I get e to the ln of x plus ln y, right? So I can split that up using log of exponents. Get e to the ln x times e to the ln y, and then apply this inverse, so that becomes an x, and that becomes a y. This becomes x, and this becomes x times, which 
which is the same thing as x times y. So that's where this is coming from. It's directly coming from the first law of exponents. Okay? And the other laws are going to come from similar places, but I won't, I won't prove them. Okay, so law number two says that if I have ln of x to the y, well, this is the same thing as y times ln. Okay? And that comes from kind of doing the same sort of thing, applying the exponential of both sides and seeing that it's coming from a law of exponents. Okay? Law number three says that ln of 1 over x, right? You can think of 1 over x again as x to the minus 1. And now it's in this form, right? So now it becomes negative ln x, right? Because the negative 1 pops out of the logarithm and sits out in front as a factor. So law 3 is a special case of law 2. Okay, and then law number 4 says that ln of x divided by y, right? You can think of that as, you know, ln of x times y to the minus 1. So we're basically applying laws uh, Two, one, two, and three, right? We're applying all the previous laws for this one, right? So this gives us ln x minus ln, right? Maybe I'll, I'll do the intermediate step, right? ln of y to the minus one, right? And then that becomes a minus ln y. So I'm basically applying all the previous laws to specific cases. Okay, and then law number six, sorry, number five, says that the natural log of E is equal to one. Okay, and that's because we define these explicitly as inverse. So if this was ln of E to the one, right, that's what E means when it's sitting by itself. This is really E to the one, so now it gives you a definition. And then law number six says that ln of one Right, and we can think of that as ln of e to the zero, right? That's our law of exponents. That e to the zero, any power, any number to the zero power gives us one. So then that tells us that this has to be. Okay? And so the law of laws, the law of logs, log of logs, of logs apply all log bases. Right, except for law number five. Right, so if I had log base 10 of 10, that gives me one. Right, so log base 10 is another kind of common one. Right, and this basically asks the question, what power of 10 gives me this number x? Right, so log base 10 x equals y tells me that 10 to the y is x. Okay, and so you could have any number down here, and then your law five would just be log of that number, of that number is one, right? So log base b of b one, because b to the one is equal to one. Right, so law five is the only law that changes when you're doing the law of logs for a different base logarithm. And a different base logarithm basically asks the question, you know, what power gives me the value x. What, what power of my base? And so log base b of x is y. That answers the question, you know, what power of b gives me the value x? b to the y 